Hi crafters, it's Karen and I have a completed project that I wanted to share. I created a dream catcher layout um, using a circle piece of cardboard that I had gotten somewhere along the way. These are all of the items that I used um, in my project, or most of them anyway. So I'm going through the different um, stamps and things that I used. And this is the cardboard. And as you can see, I did peel back some of the cardboard to reveal some of the corrugated, you know, patterns there. I really love that look. So I'm taking my crocodile dial and I'm making, um, I, tried, I tried to work it out, you know, measure it out as if it were, you know, the numbers on a clock type thing, but that didn't really work well for me. <laughs> but, um... But I'm making holes about a quarter of an inch away from the edge all the way around, trying to be even about it. And I'm going to use this uh, twine that I picked up in the mixed media department at Michael's. And I love this stuff. I'm using it way more than I, uh, than I thought I would. Um, it's a really beautiful cotton string or twine. Anyway, um, so I'm going to thread it around and you're going to see me fuss with it a little bit before I get my my rhythm of how to thread it. I'm sorry if you could hear Shadow. She's jumping all over the place. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I'm, it's going to take a little while, a few minutes for me to get my, um, you know, my rhythm of how I'm going to thread this through the holes. It takes me a little bit to figure it out. So obviously this is a longer mixed media video. This particular project, as much as I love how it turned out, and I really am pleased with how it turned out, um, it took forever. <laughs> it just seemed to take forever. And I usually don't like to spend more than a couple of days on a project because I'm, I'm anal in that I can't start another project until my current project is completed. So I've been stuck in this holding pattern, working on this project, trying to figure out how I wanted to create the feathers and how I wanted the feathers to dangle from my dream catcher and how I wanted the layout to go and all that. So anyway, because Karen, Karen can't edit, <laughs> it turns into a long process video as well. Um, so... I know it's a long process video, but, um, and I almost wasn't going to post it. However, I know that there are some of you who wouldn't mind it being long. And let's face it, you're at the controls and you can skip ahead if you want. Um, but I know there are several of you who enjoy watching these types of videos. I'm one of them. I love watching the process videos of, you know, mixed media and all that. So I, I posted it. So anyway, here, here we go. I realized that my, um, the string that I cut to thread th around the edges of my dream catcher, um, it's just way too long. So I need to cut it, cut it back. And then at some point I know, I realized that the holes that I created on the dream catcher were too small so I went to the next largest size hole on my crocodile. So here's where I finally get my stride. And I would have cut the all that beforehand out except like I said I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so here I'm just threading it around. And I go over it a couple of times um, and I'll show you at some point in the video. I do show you how it turned out. I went around the edges twice so that it's you know doubled so once i figured out how i wanted to thread it to get the look that i wanted uh, it went really quickly so here's the finished look so i thought that was cool so now i'm getting ready to color my feathers and i stamped these feathers using my sheena um, stamp set um, I think it's Sheena Douglas stamp set and also the uh, feather stamp set and die set that you can pick up at, I believe, Michael's. 
uh, I used my watercolor pad to stamp them all out using the Ranger Archival ink. And then I'm using just my plain old paint palette, watercolor palette, to color them in. And obviously, I'm not being very precise about it. I'm not being very careful. I knew the colors I wanted to use, but I am not being very, uh, you know, perfect about it. I just wanted to get color on there because I know I knew that in the end, they're going they're going to be pretty. Once I added the glitter, I wanted to add, and once I cut them out and it, you know, I knew that they would come out. So I'm just going over them with um, some, I wanted there to be some teals and yellows and also some pinks. I'm using um, the paper for the background of my dream catchers from the new uh, summer, summer dreams. I, it's the new um, hot by beachy themed pad at Michael's which has a lot of pinks and um, blues in it and anyway I'm using one of those background uh, papers in there for the background and those are the colors that I wanted to bring out so I'm painting them all up I'm going to end up cutting out the large ones and I'll show you in a moment And this is how they came out. They came out really sweet. And I did um, use another, um, I have a feather die set from Niche, I think it is, from My Mind's Eye, I believe, from On Trend, a collection that I got at the expo last year. And it's just a feather, it's not a, it's not a stamp. So um, I had used that as well and I'll show you I, I end up showing you that process where I um, do some mixed media on a separate sheet to on a separate sheet of watercolor paper so that I can use it to die cut my other feathers so I'm outlining these feathers using my I believe it's Walnut Stain Distress Ink, just to give them a, um, a nice edge to them, a defined edge. And now I'm going to use my, um, this is the Studio Acrylic Gel Medium that you can find at Michael's. It's from Pebio. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But there's all different types of um, gel mediums, some with texture and everything this is just the plain gel medium so I'm using this just to go over my um, feathers to make them a little stronger because even though they're on watercolor paper I needed them to be I needed them to be more sturdy you know and also I wanted to use it as an adhesive for my distress glitter um, that I'm going to be sprinkling on them and this gel medium like most gel mediums dries really really quickly so um, I end up doing a couple of coats be because before I could get the stickles glitter on there <laughs> the feathers would start to dry so I try to um, never use glitter <laughs> even though I love purchasing glitter it's it just always ends up everywhere but I did a pretty good job of keeping it contained <laughs> this particular time and I'm using a little spoon that I picked up at sprinkle and sugar and sprinkle or sparkle sprinkle and sparkle a little glitter spoon which comes in handy so all of these feathers came out really super cute and of course they're only one-sided so my next problem was to figure out how to add string to them and i share that coming up in the video so here i'm taking another fresh piece of watercolor paper in eight by eight and i'm using my prima bloom sprays i first used some gesso um, on my watercolor paper, just a thin coat of gesso um, to make the paper a little stronger and such. But now I'm going over it 
with my bloom sprays and I'm, I want to create some textures in the background. I want to do some stamping because this um, paper, as beautiful as it comes out whole, um, I do end up cutting it up because I knew I wanted to use this to die cut more feathers so that some of the feathers that I could use would have a mixed media look about them, would have layers, you know, stamping and everything. So here I'm just playing with my colors. I use some, I'm not sure if I use any tea stain, but I use some of the yellows and golds and the cotton candy pink. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't, I forgot the other colors. I just, I just grabbed the colors that I knew would work well with my particular layout. So I want to dry them all up before I start my next step. And for some reason, I, I, I had to distress the edges, even though I'm using this as a die cut, you know, to die cut feathers out of, I still couldn't leave it with the edges unfinished. <laughs> that was, that's my own OCD type deal going on there. And then um, I'm using the archival ink in a, and these mixed media stamps that I picked up at the expo. This is like a honeycomb type um, pattern. Really, really cute. And this is a circle one. It's like a, a coffee stain. And this is the first time I, I've used them. And I just love the way this one stamps out. So I try to do my stamping in like, you know, groups. Like, uh, you know, layers. Like I'm taking this little text stamp and I'm going over the circle with the text stamp, you know, to, to create little groups of stamping. And I love the way this background came out. It could have been, you know, a really pretty page for a art journal or something. And now I'm getting ready to use the Bow Bunny stamps that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and the um, stamp I use is Believe. And here you can see I put my acrylic stamp on backwards. <laughs> Do you see that? <laughs> I'm glad I tested it out on the back side before I stamped it out. I knew it didn't feel right, but here we go. It's going to work perfectly now. I had it upside down on my acrylic block. <laughs> so I'm trying to layer the words with the circle and the honeycomb, you know, to, to make some sort of a pattern. Now there's these little arrows in the stamp set and they're very cool as well. So I'm using those randomly. And then this, this um, stamp says faith. So I'm using that a couple of times. And I thought about, you know, not not creating my own feathers, but actually using feathers. But I have so many feather stamps and I have so many feather dyes because I love feathers that it just made it just made sense to create the feathers myself. And, you know, it was fun doing it. I love doing this sort of thing. So it was very relaxing. So I, I chose to create my feathers. And I think they all came out really cool. As a matter of fact, I have quite a bit of them left. So I'm going to be using them in upcoming projects as well. So now I'm, I'm feeling like it, it needs just a hint more color. A little bit more peach and um, 
softer greens and I'm, I used um, some Lindy Stamp Gang and Tattered Angels as well and see the die sitting there to the left that's the die that I'm going to be using to um, die cut feathers out of out of this and now I'm trying to water down some gesso and sprinkled sprinkle the gesso around um, for white splatters and it just doesn't work for me because I didn't you know I didn't take the time to mix mix it up properly but I get the basic effect so now I'm going to work on my on the Dreamcatcher base itself now I've already gone over it with some uh, gesso white gesso as you can see on the front and back excuse me and now I'm I took that paper and I tried to tear it so that um, it it would be torn where the corrugated sections of my dream you know my base would be uh, I was a little bit off but in the end it comes out really cool um, so I'm trying to fit this on and I'm using my gel medium from I believe it's Liquitex to adhere this this is such a, a beautiful uh, paper sheet of paper I knew that um, this was the paper that I wanted to use for the dream for this layout And I, I've had this circle piece of cardboard for the longest time. I knew that um, when I asked my husband to save it, I knew this is what I was going to do with it. And then the other day when I picked up the paper pad from Michael's, I knew that um, that was the paper collection I wanted to use. I wanted to incorporate some pinks into this beachy layout. So now I'm going to add some clear glaze it's um or crackle clear crackle medium and this is from deco art or clear crackle glaze maybe anyway it's a, as you can see it um it goes on clear and when it dries it leaves very fine little crackles and so it gives such an awesome effect they're very very fine um crackles it does take a while to dry so I think I might have let it sit overnight. Um, now here are my feathers. I'm going to show you how nice they came out. Um, those feathers that I die cut out of the paper, I edged with my gold um, foil pen and they came out really cool. So yeah, I'm loving how the feathers came out. That's the crackle glaze, the Deco Art Media crackle glaze that I used. And um, I know you can't see it in the video, but there are pictures at the end. Maybe you can pick up some of the crackle in the background. It came out really neat. So I want, because my the edge of my paper is shorter than the edge of the cardboard, I wanted to um, kind of make it so that that edge wasn't so sharp and outline it a little bit so I'm using my distress my white distress ink um, paint sorry my picket fence distress paint and now I'm going with the I believe this is sponge sugar distress paint and I'm going around the edges but this was like too pink for me I'm just trying to find um, a good medium that I can blend around the edges of my paper so that it blends into the you know where the um, the threading of the string is and everything so that it kind of blends together you know so in the end this paint isn't going to do it either and I even try some acrylic paint um, and now I'm taking my baby wipe and I'm going to kind of blend that paint in a little bit with the baby wipe at some point 
So yeah, this this whole process was like trial and error. I knew how I wanted the um, dream catcher to look in my mind, but <laughs> getting to that point was tricky for me. I've never, um, you know, created a project like this, although I've done mixed media layouts before. But so this is where I, I tried my um, acrylic paint to try to blend it out, but then that's that's too too blue and too much color. I really didn't want that much color. You see. So I'm going to end up blending that out. And also the because I used the crackle um, medium, crackle glaze medium there, um, it takes the acrylic paint and everything differently there. Makes it easier for me to wipe it off for one with the baby wipe because it does have that um, glazed medium on there on there. So now I'm trying to figure out um, what I can use to blend around those edges. I'm trying to remove as much of that blue as I can. And now I decide I'm going to use the crackle paste. Um, and this is from Deco Art as well. And these Deco Art um, mediums I picked up at Joann's. And they're all very affordable. So I'm using, I'm going to use the deco paste. I was going to use gesso, but I wanted there to be texture as well. So I'm using the um, crackle paste around all the edges of my paper. And I'm going to kind of blend it out a little bit. And in the end, um, I like the result. And I would have saved myself a lot of time and energy if I had just done this in the first place. But it's all trial and error and it's about getting to know your different mediums and knowing how they affect with each other and and knowing how to use them and or you know how they look when when you use them and what types of properties they each have so it's it's all just trial trial and error I wanted to get some of that crackle paste in between those corrugated ridges there um, because I thought that would look really cool having um, that crackle in the middle, the cracks in the middle of those ridges there. So I wanted this to be like a shabby beachy type um, layout, which is why I'm going more with um, pretty shabby colors. So now I have to leave this to dry for a while. So while that was drying, I start figuring out how to thread my feathers. Oh my goodness, this was frustrating. <laughs> so I took some thinner string, just regular kitchen thin string that you get at the hardware store or whatever. And I put some glue in the in the end I, I use a I end up using gel medium on the tips of on the stems of my feathers. But, and I just put some gel medium on there and then I just start wrapping the string, that very fine string around the tips of my feathers. And um, as you can see, I have a hard time holding it and wrapping it and then I'm, you know, knotting it. So now I'm going to use my gel medium, which does make it much easier because it's thicker and it holds the string in place rather than this Scott's Quick Dry glue and it makes that little stem piece much more sturdy so I'm, I'm going to wrap you know the different feathers that I want to use and like I said I ended up with 
a lot of feathers left because I think I only used like six feathers, six, eight feathers in my project and I have much more than eight feathers there on my on my desk. But it was very uh, tricky for me to wrap these. And then do you see the beads sitting there? I wanted there also to be beads because it's um, you know it's a dream catcher and um, you know the feathers hang down with the beads and everything and I definitely wanted to incorporate some beads. Now see that little feather there that that's one with the gold trim that I'm holding right there. That's one that I die cut out of that mixed media paper that I had. And um, it came out really cute. And then when I used my gold foil pen to outline the edges of those feathers, they really, it really made them pop. They really came out pretty. So I'm looking forward to using some of those in my other projects as well. So as you can see, I'm just wrapping my feathers and tying them in a, in a knot and I'm going to end up stringing some beads as I did with that first one that I shared you know somehow and then um, and then in the end I, I don't show it in the video but I make three um, three strings of feathers and beads and then I tie each string to the bottom of my dream catcher and I and I didn't video that part of it because it was really a try that was a really trial and error I wasn't sure how I was going to end up doing that and it would have taken a long time to vi it to video it because it it was a learning process so here I'm stringing some of my beads onto that regular old string that I have and um, I'm just grabbing beads randomly using colors that I knew I want I you know I wanted to highlight for the layout but not being very very particular about the beads that I grabbed um, I have so many <laughs> I have so many beads so so there you go that's another string and then I knot it up so that I can add beads to higher up on the on a string. I know I'm not explaining it correctly, but <laughs> in the end, when you look at the photos, you'll see what I mean. So here, um, the crackle paste came out really, really cool around the edges of my my layout. But I thought a little bit of a gold touch might work just um, just as a hint to outline it, you know, a little bit of color. So rather than going for my gold um, heavy body acrylic paint, which I was going to use, I decided to use my gold gelato because I'd be able to blend it out and make it as dark or as light as I wanted. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm, I want it to be an outline, but I don't want it to be so obvious you know so now I'm trying to incorporate a little bit of that melon pink color and now a little bit of turquoise but that didn't work so I'm, I'm using this coarse texture gel that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and this bubbles stencils that I found at um, Michael's it came with a stamp set and um, I knew I wanted to use this stencil, but I didn't want to use modeling paste because I didn't want it to be white. Like, um, you know, I didn't want them to be white bubbles. I wanted you to be able to see the background paper. So this coarse texture gel dries clear and it has a, a shimmered texture to it and it's thick enough. So it works really well with your stencils and it's transparent which is perfect because it actually looks like, in the end, it actually looks like little glistening bubbles on my layout. It was awesome. So now I'm taking this corrugated paper that I've picked up somewhere along the way and some of this paper from a four by six pad that I found at Hobby Lobby at some point in time. I love that pineapple gold paper. And I wanted to do some definite layers using these colors because they match the background. And I wanted to add some burlap trim, you know, so that it would peek through 
on the front of my layers. You'll see, there we go. And um, so now I'm going to do my layering with in my photo mat first before I add it onto my layout. And that little clip there is, I, I'm not sure where I picked that up at, but it, it mimics the sunglasses that I'm wearing in the photo. So I, rather than hot glue, I'm using my Scott's Quick Dry on the back of the photo because I didn't want to, you know, melt the photo. But I did use hot glue on the other layers. And um, you can just barely see that those are gold pineapples there. Really cute. And my background, that gel medium, texture gel medium is not dry yet, obviously. This is a wood, wood piece that I picked up at Michael's and I wanted to bring some color to it. So I'm using my gelatos. I'm using the, I believe that's a raspberry color. They, they really don't have colors listed on them, but you can see it's like a deep raspberry and it went darker than I wanted to, but that's okay. And I'm using this lime green as well with hints of gold just to tie in the um, gold outline of the layout and um, some of the gold beads that I used on the feathers. And my title ended up being uh, gold as well. Although you don't see me put my title on, you'll see it in the photos at the end. So my, um, my background is still kind of um, wettish, but I'm going to work with it anyway because I'm just wanting to get this done at this point. It's already been a couple of days. So I'm adding some other cardboard to the back of my photo mat so that my, um, you know, the photo layering doesn't sit directly on the, um, on the base, you know, to give it some dimension. And there you go. That's going to look really sweet. And then I had taken, I had layered them before I started filming and I had incorporated this canvas tag with the gold tip there in the layers and it looked really cute and then I forgot to add it. So um, I'm just going to add it this way. I'm trying to speed up this drying process <laughs> because I'm really wanting to um, you know, just get the layout portion of it completed. This was my favorite part. And I thought about using the colored um, cheesecloth that I had created, but I'm going with just a plain white because I wanted it to give, you know, a soft, wispy look to the layout. Like a little breezy look, you know, the cheesecloth gives. And um, I also love the texture of it, mixed with that burlap and all the other texture. This is a dye that I, from Elizabeth Designs, and I picked it up at the expo, and I love it. I wanted to make sure and use this dye in this particular project. It's just circles, but to me, I see bubbles. So... I added a couple layers of that um, die, die cut, and you're going to see me get glue all over my photo. <laughs> Look, I drop it, and there you go. <laughs> but what I do in the end is I end up taking some of that coarse texture gel and my bubbles stencil, and I'm going to put bubbles on my photo. And because I knew I wouldn't be able to get that glue off of the off of the picture, right? So if I added those textured bubbles with the you know gel medium there, it would kind of disguise my mistake. And in the end, it just looks really it looks re like a really cool addition to the layout. I'm adding some random embellishments. I really appreciate you all um, sitting through this process with me. I truly appreciate it. I know it, it's been a long process video, and I know I don't always explain myself properly, 
but I hope that um, you've enjoyed it and that maybe you've learned something about the different mediums or, or whatever and that um, the video leaves you inspired. Now I'm going through these recollections. Flowers are so pretty. Um, trying to pick and choose which ones to incorporate. There are just so many pretty, pretty flowers these days at, at Michael's. It was, it was hard to, you know, use just a few rather than load it, load the whole thing up with flowers. But I'm using my hot glue to attach the flowers. And now this is a little um, charm. It's a little mermaid charm. Uh, and I've, I have a few of them that I've had for quite a while and I wanted to incorporate it just because it's a mermaid and some metal in the, in the layout. I just thought it was a cute little touch. And this is a dream catcher. When I do get my own scrapbook room, I mean, when I inherit my son's bedroom as a scrapbook room, I will hang this on my wall. And now I'm trying to take a couple of the feathers and incorporate them in the layout because I do have so many left over. And so I find a place for a couple of them. And it's, I do end up titling it, titling this happy because um, it, it was one of the Dear Lizzie gold foam um, thickers words and so I used it I was going to use the die cut dream and just and use some small letterings and put life is but a dream but um, I kind of took the easy way out using the word thickers <laughs> now you here I'm using the little um, um, what do you call them they're not seed beads but they're tiny little um, mixed media beads and I'm attaching them with my gel medium. The gel medium will dry clear so all you'll see are the tiny little micro beads and I use them in gold and um, they just look really really cool and um, I was very careful with them so they didn't get everywhere and I used gel medium to attach that little acrylic starfish so I'm pretty much done here. I'm just going to add a few little pieces, bits and pieces here, finishing touches. And then in the end I realized, you know, less is more. Um, I got to know when to stop. <laughs> so thanks again for um, taking the time to watch the video. I know it was a long one, but like I said, I hope um, you've enjoyed it. Uh, leave me a comment and let me know what you think and um, I'm sure I will talk to you soon. Check out the photos coming up for a detailed look at my finished project. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.